Chapter 11, 2020, The Quarantine, Year 3. Now, with Chapter 11 comes a lot of fun things for Nights of Horror. We got to actually uh, grow the podcast a lot more. Uh, we started getting guests on weekly, uh, guests from haunts, guests from various different places. Uh, we even went as far to get Rick West on the show uh, early in 2020 to promote uh, Midsummer Screen's fifth anniversary, which wouldn't happen until 2022, but we'll talk about that on episode 13. But it was it was a lot of fun to uh, to connect with Rick West more. I mean, if, for those who don't know, Rick West, uh, TPA, was one of the big influences behind Knights of Horror. So to finally get to sit down and, and talk with the guy now that he's in a more kind of executive role with mid Dumber scream now he's one of the creative people behind it and, and to you know have the time to talk with him was a lot of fun guy can carry a conversation he's a very very wonderful guest we've had him on multiple times and i will continue to have him on for if, if as long as he's available and, and, and able to do it we finally went to haunt x that year we were very new to that we had no idea what it was going to be but because of going to haunt x and covering that we actually got to meet uh scott Dieterman, who is a very dear friend of ours now and um, through him, we've gotten to interview the uh, Queen Mary Sliders and a various amount of other amazing talent out there. But it was because of Han X that we got to meet him. He actually hit us up, uh, you know, asking to meet up and seeing if we want to do a show together. And we got things set up. And now he's one of my really good friends. So I really uh, enjoyed chatting with him, picking his brain. And just overall, I appreciate his friendship. So that was a lot of uh, a lot of fun. However. As we were starting 2020 off very strong, something happened. A SARS-like virus which has infected hundreds in China has now reached the United States. Airports around the world are stepping up health screenings on passengers arriving from Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the outbreak. Now, nine people have died in China. At least 470 there are infected. And there are fears the coronavirus will spread during the busy Lunar New Year travel period. Besides, the U.S. cases have also been reported in South Korea, Japan and in Thailand. The pandemic started in march of 2020 um and it was weird because i remember that last week before the pandemic shut everything down uh invisible man and the hunt had just come out in theater so i went to do a double feature with sammy that day and we went to go see both of those movies and that'd be one of the last movies i'd see in the theaters for about a few months here in 2020 but it, it was a, a setback for us we had to start doing everything over zoom uh, we couldn't do in-person guests for a while until things were kind of more cleared up. Uh, but with that became the start of the cancellation of Haunts that summer. And it started with Halloween Horror Nights, Not Scary Farm followed. You know, there was not going to be Queen Mary Dark Harbor because the boat was shut down. So that was in the brink of of being sunk. Um and it was just kind of, you know, a low point for us, especially uh, my lowest point when I used my platform to uh, express feelings about certain topics. And um, it was wrong of me to do that for this platform because that's, this platform is not meant to be something like that. It's not meant to be political. It's not meant to be anything. It's supposed to be an escape for everyone who are just horror fans to get out of the reality that we call life for a few minutes and just geek out with us on haunt and horror. And that summer I failed that mission statement. Um, however, with that being the lowest point, um, it started coming back. We started, um, doing original programming, keeping up with the podcast and, and just overall trying to find alternatives for a haunt season for 2020, because we didn't know what we were going to get. We didn't know what was going to be around. We didn't know if we were gonna get a haunt season at all. But with the help of a lot of home haunts and a few events doing a COVID safe event, we got a few events. That summer, we also started a show called Maze Treatments, which was one of my favorite shows to do. We would judge maze treatments based upon uh, certain layouts that uh, TLAV had done in the past, and we turned it into a full-blown season of a competition of some of our 
uh, YouTube friends who, who, who had the time to do it. And, um, it was a lot of fun to, to get together with a lot of content creators and see what they were going to create and to have an overall, um, competition to see who was going to have the best made maze designs throughout the thing. And Connor from Connor, Florida was our first season, season one winner. I would love to bring it back one day. It's just a matter of getting the people. Connor, I know I still owe you a plaque. I, I have not forgotten. So I will be getting that to you really soon. Just let me get by haunt season. Um, but we had a fun time with maze treatments and it was a lot of fun. And I, I definitely want to do a season two with new creators and some returning. Um, Connor has already agreed to do a guest judge spot for that season because he was the first season winner. So that'd be a lot of fun. Um, but we would change the format differently, but you know, we'll see what happens. But Maze Treatment was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great content creators on there. Uh, Connor Florida was there. Josue from TLEV was representing TLEV Media. We had SoCal Exploring, uh, now who's known as Exploring Attractions. Uh, Lost TV was there. Zombie Chris was there. Eddie Tainment was there. Connor Florida was there. Um, and we just had a fun time. It was a great time. The Haunt Line was there. Uh, and, and to see a lot of these amazing ideas to show what the future of the haunt industry is was really really cool so then we started doing speculations again we didn't know what was coming we had a, we had an idea of what was coming but we had no uh for sure mindset of what was coming we were seeing construction here and there going on but we didn't know if we were getting anything for sure turns out a lot of the major haunts never showed up or never you know opened because of the pandemic and it was kind of a depressing haunt season but then we started figuring out ways for everyone to enjoy haunt season, whether you were stuck inside, whether you were uh, with someone with high risks, or um, you could go out. We were trying to find alternatives for everyone to have a fun, spooky Halloween season, whether it was in the comfort of your own home or outside wearing a mask and whatnot. So we discovered Roblox. Now, with Roblox, we had seen that they created a Universal Orlando-inspired theme park, um, which was basically Universal Roblox, which was really cool. And they hosted a Halloween Horror Nights event. So we checked it out and we did live streams on it and we had a great time with it. I mean, we had fun. We had a lot of uh, fans that would join Zoom calls. We would do like a, like a get together with some of the fans and go to the parks and go through some of the mazes. It was a lot of fun. And to hear everyone's reactions about it, I mean, that was the, probably the most and, and closest that we've gotten to interact with the fans and, and do haunts together and stuff. And that was a lot of fun. But then we started finding out there was other like little like indie haunts that people made in Roblox that was really cool. So we were trying to find so many alternatives. We filmed a lot of videos of walkthroughs on, on said um, topics. You know, we, we, we put them all on our channel. So if you want to go back and reminisce what a COVID Halloween looked like, that was it. So we did a lot of walkthroughs and stuff for the channel just to give everyone, a, you know, a feeling of Halloween. Um, Knott's didn't host Not Scary Farm, but they did host something that really kept the Scary Farm vibe alive. And that was Taste of Halloween, which was the part of their tasting event, which was really fun. And that really paid a great tribute to Not Scary Farm overall. They had fog, great food, uh, decor looked amazing in the park. They had the tribute store open, um, and they even decked out for um, Camp Snoopy as like a little um, trick or treat trail. But there was a lot of great throwback props to Not Scary Farm that really brought that alive, and and I was very thankful for that because that was that gave me a good Halloween vibe. LA Haunted Hayride did something which was really great. It was like a drive-in experience. So you were in your car the entire time while the characters kind of just scared around your cars and, and went in along with the uh, films that they were showing and some of the in-between songs that they were playing. Hosted by Monty Revolta. That was a lot of fun. That was another experience of, uh, you know, um, Midnight Falls that you got to experience. You'll never get to really probably get to experience that again, which was the drive-in portion of it. And for them to come up with something in a matter of weeks was was really good to give us a uh, a good haunt season. Um, one that was a little controversial because of opening night and because of other things was uh, Urban Legends, um, which was a drive through haunt at the OC Fair uh, grounds. And I had a great time with that one. Both times that I went. We went opening night. Yeah, there were some issues. But then we went again a second night. And it was just a much better flow through. Uh, more spots were filled. More areas were opened up. Uh, costumes had changed. So it, it, it got better as time went on. And I noticed a lot of people um, really went to the extent to um, try to get a job there because they wanted to do something for Haunt, which I was like, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Get some of these amazing talent that we've seen on the streets of like Knott's and Hall uh, Halloween Horror Nights over here for a season to see what they can bring to life. A lot of fun. I would say the biggest highlight of 2020 because it was the pandemic and we had the opportunity to do this was our interview with Grant Kramer. That was a lot of fun. 
um, you know, me being a diehard Killer Clowns fan and then him accepting the invitation that we sent out to him to be a guest on the podcast was so awesome. Um, and I was just so starstruck that I even got the opportunity to do that, um, furthering my, uh, my love for this movie even further. So, I mean, that was a lot of fun. And I, I really thank Grant. I mean, we didn't not just do one. We did two podcasts to promote Willie's Wonderland too. And it was a great time. We had a fun time and uh, I really just can't say thank you enough for that. Uh, we do, we did some more original videos during hot season because we had to figure out more content for you guys. We had to figure out how are we going to keep the Halloween spirit alive during the pandemic? And we found out ways we, we went through uh, Logan uh, we, I got to go over his house and we got to film his entire horror collection. Um, so we got to see a lot of his collection and whatnot. And that was a lot of fun. Those videos were a lot of fun to film, uh, to see what he had in his collection from like the Halloween films to John Carpenter films, to just like his favorite Halloween comfort films. It was a whole thing that we had like a whole series for the month of October, which was really cool. Uh, will strip down memory lane. If any of you remember, will, uh, we did a similar, um, video diary of him kind of reminiscing back to the times he went to Horror Nights. So that was kind of like the first first like origin docu-series that we did. And uh, I was just kind of like the the host along with the director and he just told his story and it was a lot of fun. So that was fun. And we collabed with On the Fence Movie Reviews for every Friday to release a Slashback Friday, which was Rob, who is on On the Fence Movie Reviews, Boo Bros, The Howling Hour, and The Nights of Horror. We collabed with them through Rob. We got to uh, combine the two channels and do Slashback Friday on both channels. Uh, where basically, Rob would just uh, do uh, horror movie reviews on some of his favorite Halloween movies. So that was really cool. Uh, Corona Haunt and Pirate's Cave. I mean, and there's a lot of other uh, home haunts that really saved the haunt season. But Corona Haunt and Pirate's Cave, a terrific uh, projection and lighting show with some water effects and whatnot that looked like it belonged in a theme park. I mean, they did an amazing job with this show and they kept that Halloween spirit and the Pirate's Cave lore and story alive through this. And again, that was like probably another once in a lifetime thing that they'll do. I mean, Jacob is really good with lighting and whatnot and sound and so is his dad. So I don't doubt in the future that they'll do something again like that or, you know, something smaller scale if they ever needed to. Uh, and Corona Haunt blew us away. I mean, we ha we had heard about the name for so long and we finally went to go check it out and it was cool to walk through a maze. They did an actual walk through maze and it was cool to actually go through a maze during that time because it was just, you know, we hadn't gone through any mazes. We were doing everything drive up or drive in or it was there were shows and yard displays. So to actually go through a maze because of them and Drex Society that year, we actually got to go through mazes as well as the Dark Harvest. Um, but Corona Haunt had an amazing uh walkthrough it gave me a lot of halloween horror nights vibes and it was a lot of fun they even went as far as to give us a behind the scenes interview and let us do the try not to get scared challenge there so that was a lot of fun and i really thank them for that and i really appreciate them for that and i really value their friendship uh we did the try not to get scared challenge like i just said COVID edition uh like i said we couldn't find any walkthrough mazes and because of corona haunt we were able to still give you a try not to get scared challenge and we figured out a loophole and a way around it we were masked up and, and we, we did, we had a fun time doing it. I mean, Rob, that was the first year I got to film it, how I wanted to film it with Rob following us with the camera and then us focusing on us and kind of combining it with the footage of the POV. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that's when I won my second year in a row. Um, and then next year we would go on to tie who knows what's going to happen this year, but I would win my second year in a row, marking me as a two time back to back champ. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. Dark harvest was a lot of fun too. I had never been through a corn maze ever. And again, to have something like that during the pandemic was a lot of fun. Um, and they made it uh, very uh, spread out as far as when they would let guests in. And we felt okay and safe with it, especially during COVID. Uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. Just, it was great. Like I said, I've never been through a corn maze. So to see that was um, a hell of a time. We also did the uh, haunted car wash. Now, this was something that I had heard for a long time that people were doing in other states and whatnot. And to finally have something like that here in California, it was really cool because you got the whole car wash experience along with the scare acting experience. And that, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, to have scare actors kind of scare you all the way until you get into the tunnel and then scare you inside the actual car wash was something very unique and very fun. Um, we had a fun time with that one that first year, and I, I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to go back. We went back last year, and it was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what they pull off this year, especially with two locations. They're gonna, they had a lot of great yard displays. I mean, a lot of people were very limited to what they wanted to do. A lot of people kind of like wanted to do um, 
walkthroughs wanted to do something but they just realized because of covid it was probably safer just to do yard displays and there was a lot of great yard displays out there for display for halloween they really kept the halloween spirit alive even though we couldn't walk through stuff we could still pull our car over go out take some pictures and check out the entire um, area the thing I think that really made Haunt Season Haunt Season was uh, Stranger Things experience. They had that in L.A. Now, they did this as a, of course, a pandemic thing where um, they had a whole thing going where it was the story of season three. And, you know, you're going through this parking lot and helping the kids out, uh, try to defeat the Russians and the Demogorgons. They really had a amazing production on this and it's still going out there today they've made it now a walkthrough experience which is really cool and i'm hoping if they ever come back to la they continue that walkthrough experience because i'd like to do a walkthrough of that but to see what it was like in the car we were kind of like the first test audience to do that it was kind of like a a high school reunion that you were coming back to and they had like all the characters interact with you they were giving out stuff prizes and whatnot in the pre-show and then you went in and that's when the uh immersity of stranger things really started from you know, the first scene of, of Dustin and, and Robin and Steve and everything, they're all, you know, trying to escape the Russians. They even have a Demogorgon run out and whatnot, which was really cool. And then, of course, you know, you're going into the Upside Down, which was really cool. And the final scene where they had everyone on stage and doing all that stuff was really fucking cool. So for COVID, that was a lot of fun. And they the, the production was good. It was all in a fucking indoor parking lot, which was really, really cool. And it was just a fun experience that really immersed me into the Stranger Things experience, even though, you know, it was COVID and stuff. Um, Drek Society. I mean, this is the first year I got to meet these guys, too, at located out in Ontario. Um, these guys put on another walkthrough maze, and this was something we were stoked for because it was based around the uh, original monsters from Universal. So that was a lot of fun to see another version of their... Um, you know, their movie theater and everything. And this one was, of course, the 1940s during World War II. So they had like a really cool facade. They had like war sounds going on, like old timey 40s music going on from World War II. It was really immersive. And then as you went into the theater to kind of take shelter from the Nazis, you were in the movies themselves with the Phantom of the Opera, Phantom of the Opera, Dracula, Frankenstein, um, the Wolfman, and the Mummy. There was a lot of uh, great sets put together. We even got a behind the scenes tour, and Sean was really cool to let me film like some uh, B roll of like the character scaring people to put a little compilation together for them. So that was a lot of fun. And then you know the next year they would invite me out to scare. So that was that was a lot of fun. I I very much value their relationship as well. They've been nothing but nice people to me and I I try to return the favor by you know getting their stuff advertised and stuff. So you know these guys are, are working their asses off to pro put together some really good home haunts. So that's a lot of fun. The last major thing we did that haunt season is actually we took a trip out to Arizona to visit Sammy. Sammy usually comes down here majority of the time. I took a trip out there to visit him because he had told me there was actually a full-scale haunt going on called Fear Farm. I had never heard of Fear Farm, but it was the same company who put on Queen Mary's Dark Harbor and the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. That's right. Um, what was it? 13th Floor Entertainment. Uh, I know they're contracted usually with... Uh, with Dark Harbor, they actually put on Dark Harbor. They put on uh, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, as, as well as a bunch of other haunts across the country. But to see Fear Farm and to a company that I knew going into this, so it, it didn't feel like I was kind of like a, a stranger to the event or nothing, because I already knew how they how they uh, approach their scares and 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 how they you know set up stuff and the originality behind them. And, you know, I went the last weekend of the event. Uh, there wasn't very many scare actors. It was like the weekend after Halloween. So I think a lot of them finished like that Halloween weekend. And I, you know, I went and it was, you know, it was fun. It was scenically, it was very beautiful. There was, there was just a lot of dead spots within the maze because a lot of people had left, but there's a lot of potential in that. And I heard they had moved locations since. So that's a lot of fun. But, um, I had a great time in Arizona and to see my best friend out there, we did stuff. We even got to go to the movie theaters cause I hadn't been in the movie theaters in so long. We saw Tenet and Indiana Jones and the last crusade. So that was a lot of fun, but you know, overall we tried to make the most out of haunt season in 2020. We couldn't do much. We knew that we were very limited to what we can do, but we made the most out of it. And we try to make something for everyone to do, whether you were at home or whether you were taking the risk and going out because, you know, COVID at the time, we didn't know much about it. We were still learning. It was an everyday process, but we had a lot of fun with that haunt season and we made the most out of it. And that's what we had to do because this, this was like an interesting haunt season to say the least. We never been through any of this in at least our lifetime. So to see this, it was definitely, um, definitely interesting of how a lot of haunts got creative and pulled it off. 
And I really think every single person, whether you're a home hunter, an indie hunter, or um, a professional level haunt, in my eyes, you guys are all amazing and talented. So I really thank all of you for, for giving in an effort to to keeping Halloween alive that season because it, it, it really made a difference. It, you know, it was already sad enough as it was, but you guys are the reasons why Halloween got kept around for another season, and it was a lot of fun. And it kept us busy, and it kept us trying to give you guys content to watch at the safety of your house or if you wanted to go visit them. It was all completely up to you. But 2021 would come around. And that would mark the return of the Knights of Horror. But that's for another chapter that you will see tomorrow. With all that being said, my name is Anthony from the Knights of Horror. You just watched another episode of Knights of Horror Origins, Chapter 11, The Quarantine, Year 3. Give them the love.